Hello, this is Ricky Harbour with Subside Electronics. During this video we will show you how to use the Locator Configuration Utility to configure your UtilaGuard standard or advanced receivers and transmitters. We will also show you how to use this utility to keep any of your UtilaGuard receivers and transmitters up to date with the latest software. Let's begin by opening the configuration utility software. If your computer is connected to the internet, the software will communicate with the subsite server checking for new updates. If an update is found, a window will appear asking if you would like to download it. Select yes and allow it to download and install to your computer. Once it is installed, you will no longer have to be connected to the internet to update your receivers and transmitters. Now it's time to connect our receiver or transmitter to our PC. Start by plugging the supplied USB cable into your computer and then into either your receiver or transmitter. Please be sure to allow time for the USB drivers to load and then select the connect button. Allow time for the software to connect to your UtilaGuard. Once connected, it will show what version is currently loaded on the device. Click on update to load the newest version. While this is going through the programming process, let's walk through the other items we have in the program. The password setting area allows you to password protect the receiver and or the transmitter. This will prevent other users from changing the configuration of the unit. Moving up to the tabs, our second tab is our frequency selection tab. It allows us to custom configure the device, whether it's the receiver or the transmitter, with locate frequencies that we want in each one. Yes, each unit goes out with factory preselected frequency. This tab allows you to add or remove additional frequencies, further customizing it to your needs. We will go into more detail on this tab after the update is complete. The next tab is the settings tab. It allows you to adjust the operating preferences for your receiver or transmitter. You will see the operating preferences for the device that you are plugged into. Since we are currently plugged into a receiver, you can see that we've got our receiver settings right here. We have the ability to adjust the language. We have multiple langu languages to choose from. Our depth units, how we want our depth to be displayed in inches, feet and inches, meters or centimeters. The backlight, we can either turn it off or use the auto feature. The receiver does have a photo eye on the uh, uh, keypad. It recognizes when in when you're in low light conditions and turns on the backlight automatically. Then the shutdown timer, the factory default is five minutes, but you can select that uh, to your preference. That is five minutes from the last button press. Typically what we find is that five minutes works fine unless you're on extremely long locates, but you're constantly adjusting your gain of the receiver as you're on those locates. The grid frequency is chosen according to the country that you're in and this is chosen uh, pre-chosen for you so when you order your receiver or transmitter it is pre-selected but if you do go take your unit into a different country just know that uh, depending on the country that you're in you will select either 50 or 60 Hertz according to the power frequency that is used in that country. Our gain, manual gain or semi-auto, 
semi-auto as you press the up or down arrow will take try to take the unit to mid scale from its current position while manual gain up and down arrow will adjust it one decibel at a time auto depth you can either manually force a depth utilizing the depth button or you can choose to have it auto displayed when the uh, arrows become diamonds in the center it would automatically display a depth for you our offset depth feature is only available on advanced receivers and this gives us the ability to get not only a depth down to the utility but also a horizontal offset distance so this comes in handy when we're having to locate around surface obstructions and then our audio modes down here is uh, all selected for each user's preference. Uh, go through those on your receiver. I would suggest you make those changes on the receiver itself. That way you can listen to the each individual sounds and see what uh, you prefer. Our next tab is the screen capture tab. This tab comes in handy if you build your own training material or have the need for different screenshots. Just simply hit the capture button. It will capture what is currently on the screen. This can come in handy if you also have a question for your dealer or your subsite product support group. The next tab is the splash screen. The Splash Screen tab allows you to load a customized splash screen to your receiver and transmitters. This screen will appear each time the unit is powered on and off. When creating your own splash screen, keep this information in mind. The splash screen must be saved in a bitmap format or a .bmp. The transmitter splash screen must be 400 by 240 pixels while the receiver splash screen must be 320 by 240 pixels. The last tab is the help tab. This is the starting place for any questions about this configuration utility. Starting with questions on connecting to your receiver or transmitter, updating software, password protecting using the fr frequency selection tab settings tab your screen capture tab and of course your splash screen tab as I mentioned earlier there are specific sizes that your splash screen must be if you have any questions or can't remember always go to the help tab and it will remind you that the transmitter must be 400 by 240 and the receiver must be 320 by 240. After reconnecting to our receiver you can see that the device version has a green check mark beside it indicating it is up to date. Now let's go through what we have on the frequency selection tab. Really the only two columns that we need to be concerned about is the availability column and the enabled column. This selection we do the work for you and these are pre-selected. These are selected as to the capability for each frequency. For example, 256 hertz is a line locate frequency only. It's not available in beacons or sons. It's not a power frequency. Our transmitter can transmit it either through direct connect or through the broadband clamp. It's not available with a standard clamp or in the induction or broadcast method. So we've done the work for you in these columns here. All you have to do is select 
do you want the frequency available in your device whether it's your receiver or transmitter and do you want it enabled meaning it's available and also available for selection there you may have some uh, choices that you want to be available and you may choose not to enable it for one reason or another uh, so that you can have it as an optional frequency later on for example 1.02 kilohertz we have it in there but we don't have it enabled simply because we're going to use 1.17 instead so your selections are there you can make that decision however you want to do it and then go through and select that for all of your choices once selected then you can write it to the receiver as well as the transmitter if we choose to we can also save our particular settings to a disk or to our computer that we're using to configure it for later purposes we it gives us ability to load from that location so we can save it to disk and reload it later this comes in real handy if you have multiple units and you want to use the con same configuration on each unit I hope this video was beneficial for you if you have any additional questions please feel free to contact your local subsite dealer or you're more than welcome to contact the subsite product support group Thank you and see you on future videos.